Cobbiz. Hello and welcome to Cobbiz. My name is Shalin Verma and in today's video we will understand the process of environment impact assessment reporting in India. So, EIA is a prerequisite for environmental clearance that is needed by many Schedule 1 projects as per the EIA notification of 2006. EIA is a procedure that evaluates the environmental implication of a proposed or existing project before it starts. It assesses the environmental impacts of the planned project or development considering the positive and negatives as well as the interrelated socio-economic, cultural and human aspects related to the development project. EIA is used as a tool to estimate the environmental implication of the project during the planning stage so that the project proponent can take necessary actions to mitigate the negative impact on the environment. The Government of India makes EIA reporting mandatory for environmental clearance for over 39 listed projects. As the primary goal of EIA will be to provide information to the government by highlighting the environmental and socio-economic impacts of the project, the primary goal of this reporting will be to ensure that the resources that are used are used wisely as per the applicable environmental compliance standards. The project decision makers consider the anticipated environmental consequences as early as feasible and strive to prevent, mitigate and counteract such efforts. Let's now look at the benefits of EIA reporting. So, EIA connects sustainability with development. Further, EIA allows decision makers to assess the environmental impact of development activities before the commencement of the project. Next, EIA promotes the incorporation of mitigation measures into the development plan. EIA will estimate the impacts of the existing or proposed project based on the baseline studies such as air, water, noise, soil and biological aspects. EIA also ensures that the development plan is ecologically sound and within the boundaries of ecosystems capacity and absorption as well as regeneration. So to prepare an EIA report, one must understand the stages of the assessment process. The EIA process in India consists of the following stages. First is screening. At this stage, the assessment authority determines whether the project requires a full or a partial evaluation study. Next is scoping and consideration of alternatives. Here, the project's potential impacts, zone of impact, mitigation possibilities and monitoring will be assessed. Next is assessment of alternatives. Here, the project's alternatives and mitigation measures are examined. Next is public hearing. At this stage, the concerns of the locals regarding the adverse impacts of the project are ascertained and taken into account before the final EIA report preparation. Next is Environment Management Plan. Here, the delineation of mitigation and compensation measures for all identified impacts are ascertained. The next stage is Decision Making. Here, the Impact Assessment Authority consults the project in charge and EIA consultants to take the final decision keeping in mind the EIA and EMP report. The last stage is monitoring and clearance conditions. Here, the phases of the project implementation would be monitored by the central or state level appraisal committees. So if you are wondering whether your project will require an EIA, let's see. Requirement of EIA will depend on which category your project falls. As we know, there are two categories, that is category A, which will be dealt at the central level by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and the other category, that is category B projects, that will be dealt at the state level by the SEIAA. The following projects will need an EIA for environmental clearance. First is mining of minerals. These projects include extraction of natural resources and power generation projects, mines and oils, gas exploration, river valley projects, thermal power plants and nuclear power projects. Next is primary processing and mineral production such as coal washeries, mineral beneficiation, metallurgical industries such as ferrous and non-ferrous, cement plants etc. The next category is material processing such as manufacturing and fabrication including petroleum refining industry, coke oven plants, asbestos milling and asbestos based products. Chlor alkali, soda ash, leather, chemical fertilizers, pesticide and intermediates. The next is service sector including oil and gas transportation. The next is infrastructure sector such as airports, ships, braking yards, industrial estates, parks, export processing zones, special economic zones, biotech parks, leather complexes etc. 
Let's now understand what documents you will be needing while developing an EIA report. The first is detailed project report that includes project description including the project's name, location, proposed breakup of the area, project process and capacity, water requirement, waste generation, etc. Other documents include site or layout plan, affidavit on the behalf of the project proponent and consultant stating compliance with the norms, proof of installed equipments, term of reference, proof of land ownership wherever applicable, evidence and bills of electricity and water supply connections, baseline monitoring reports of air, water, noise and soil from NABL certified labs. Let's now understand the procedure for filing an EIA. So the stages include preliminary site visit and preparation of a checklist. Next is verification of the prepared checklist with the state checklist from the Parivesh portal. Next is drafting the submission of forms after registration on the Parivesh portal. Next is drafting the presentation for EC and TOR. Next is agenda meeting for EC, TOR. The next stage is grant of TOR and subsequently baseline data generation by appraisal committee. The next stage includes preparation and submission of draft EIA for conduction of public hearing to the SPCB. The next stage is drafting the presentation and conduct of public hearing. Finally, EIA submission to the appraisal committee for the grant of EC and submission on the Parivesh portal. The next stage is drafting the final EC presentation. The next stage include agenda meeting for final environmental clearance. And finally, the last stage is the grant of environmental clearance by the appraisal committee. So finally, let's talk about the additional clearances and NOCs that are required for the preparation of a EIA report. These are forest clearance as per the Forest Conservation Act of 1980, wildlife clearance as per the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, coastal regulation zone clearance as per the issued notification of 2011, Central Groundwater Authority or the CGWA NOC, fire NOC, forest clearance showing distance from the project boundary, airport NOC from AAI for height clearance and clearance from NHAI. So that was all for this video. I hope you found this information useful. Subscribe to our channel and feel free to contact us regarding any EIA and environment compliance related queries that you may have. You can also visit our website www.cobbiz.io for more such information. Thank you for watching.